and welcome back. Happy Friday. Last time I was in here to practice was Tuesday actually, Wednesday I take the day off. Thursday, I wanted to come in and practice, but A, I felt like shit, and B, I needed a ride to go pick up my new car. So thank the Lord, I'm able to drive myself now and not rely on other people for rides. So that being said, I don't have a crazy amount of expectations for today. Okay, let's go. This exercise, I know I've talked about it before, where it's like an eccentric internal rotation, but on the way up, I usually lift, uh, so I can just feel a stretch on the way down and not worry about contracting and hurting myself. This is a shout out to Ashton Kotler. He's a Canadian gymnast from Saskatchewan that I got this idea from, because he's had some shoulder problems. This is like a, a one step up version of, of the exercise that I was already doing, but it just makes it a little bit harder, but it's still safe. So, you go nice and slow on the way down, Feel the stretch and then slowly lift it up to about halfway and then quickly go up same thing slow on the way down lift it up a little bit and then quickly go up so the point of it which makes sense now is i was always worried if i were to just go all the way down and right from here start to pull up when there's a really big stretch that i would hurt myself so that's why i'd always lift it up all the way and Ashton explained when he was doing it that you go all the way down and the reason that most people get hurt or tear something is when the muscles at like a full stretch and then you try and quickly lift it up so this way you can do eccentric and concentric training but the concentric part doesn't start from the part of full stretch it starts from like halfway up where your muscles are already like really used to being strong in that range so starting up here slow 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 you get all the way down here, you just feel that stretch. And then from here, you pull it up a little bit. Here, no pain, no stretch, but I can quickly go up. And I guess over time, you might be able to go a little bit lower before you start to pull up. So instead of starting from here like at 90 degrees and then going all the way up, eventually once I get used to it, I could go down here and maybe go starting a little bit lower and then exploding on the way up. I'm honestly not sure how much it does, but it's a good thing to change up the exercise every once in a while so your body doesn't just get used to it. Because from what I've found, doing the exact same thing over and over when it comes to rehab or, or strength exercise, your body will get used to it. So you need to keep like challenging yourself in some way just by making it harder, adding more weight, doing more reps, more sets, whatever. Okay, moving on. Ooh. Thankfully, because I now have my own car again, I was able to go to the gym where I live this morning, stretch and do my own rehab so I don't have to waste any time doing it here. So I should be able to warm up quicker than normal today compared to the last couple weeks. And for L grip hang, I've been trying to do it a little bit more consistently. And as long as I ease into it slow and I don't just try and hang with full body weight right away, I have to wait to let my shoulders relax and then I can do basically full weight. <sighs> Don't know if my shoulders are even yet, but I think it feels a little better. I usually do this one as I warm up for pommels because just stretching and skin the cat is really good for like biceps and shoulders in general but this one is really specific to pommel because I have to get my hands all the way behind my back to let my hands touching and then I stretch oh. Ooh. my elbows oh. So just for today, because I've had a couple days off, this week's already been kind of funky. Instead of only doing like four or five exercises, two sets each, I think I'm just gonna do one set of 
I don't know, eight exercises to try and get a little more out of it. I'm not just gonna do, I don't know, the, the regular amount of reps that I usually do because it's only one set, I'm gonna try and do a lot more and just kind of hit all the different body parts. So this will just be a, a quick run through of all the exercises. I'll speed it up so you don't get bored. So for butterflies on P-bars, even when I do two sets or three sets or whatever, I usually go pretty close to failure, if not to failure. It's just that this one's only gonna be one set, but you'll probably get to see that my shoulder blades are a little bit off. And whenever I start an upper arm, I usually try and like reset my shoulders and, and pull them back so they're as even as they can be, or at least so they feel even. But I would not be surprised if you can see that one's a little bit like higher than the other, one's like more out to the side. And that's why I do a lot of the back stuff to try and pull them both back into place so they can both move how they're supposed to, but they're just not quite there yet. So it's definitely more pretty, but that's my first time doing five presses or half presses, whatever you want to call them with the ankle weights. Kind of surprised. I wasn't even thinking I was going to get four, but now we're just regular P-bar dips. Really good compound exercise for your chest and your triceps. I also like it because it gets my shoulders warmed up in those like really far ranges. The normal speed on the way down, pause at the bottom to feel the stretch and then try and quickly push up to get those quick twitch muscles firing and hopefully my shoulders don't pop. Two quick core exercises, then tumble track. Okay, actually I lied, I'm gonna do P-bar swings first and then tumble track after because I think I'm gonna start P-bars and then do floor and then pommels. I don't wanna do tumble track and then P-bars and then go right into P-bars. I like going back and forth. Probably doesn't actually make a difference, but I think just the idea that it might give me a little bit of rest after doing P-bars, I can go to tumble track and then back to P-bars and then back to floor instead of tumble track, P-bar swings, lots of P-bars and then back to floor. Two days, that's all it takes, and I feel like I'm relearning everything again. Holy shit.
Now, whatever the sickness is that I have, it's really annoying. I just get really fatigued really easily on top of my muscles being achy and stuff like that. All right, one bar handstand. I need to spend more time on that. I don't work on it enough. Try to tumble track. It's been a minute since I've done Randy's on tumble track. Thankfully, the knee pain that I was feeling from Floyd the other day, I do feel it a little bit here, but it's not my patellar tendon knee, it's the meniscus side, but it's not where I feel the pain from my meniscus. It's just kind of like all throughout. If you saw the last video, you heard me talk about that and stuff, but definitely won't be doing real floor today. I'm just gonna stick to rod. If I see or feel it start to get any worse, it's better to just play it safe because I know I'm gonna have the weekend off and hoping the two extra days rest will help it even more because since Tuesday it's, it's been three days obviously and it does feel better but don't want to go one step forward and two steps back the only time I don't want to be like one of the best floor guys in the world is when I'm doing a back double fall on floor. If you pay attention to world championships, Olympics, the top guys in the world, if they ever do a back double full side pass, it's not every single time, but I'm gonna say the majority of the time, they don't stick it and it's so annoying. A beautiful double full and it's always, every single time, not every single time, like I said, but it happens more often than not. And then you'll see them stick a layout double double or a full double pike. Some of these crazy passes and then they slow down do that stupid double full side pass at the high level and they take a hop. So dumb. Oh Jesus Christ. That was a really good set. That was one of the ones where as soon as I took off I knew not to sound like an ass. I'm just saying with triple folds, I've done enough in my life where, especially on tumble track, I feel a takeoff. As long as I don't do anything funky, it'll be a stick. Yeah, after about the 30 minutes of tumble track I just did, my left knee feels fine, feels normal. My right knee doesn't feel any worse. Like I said, it's just the soreness all around, I guess, which I'm glad it's not specifically my patellar tendon or my meniscus. I guess I just gotta be careful in the future not hitting the dead spot and always staying tight for every single punch. And theoretically, I'll be good to go. Okay, like always, took longer to warm up than I thought, but we are finally here and ready to do P-bars. 
I'm determined to make it a good support day because I haven't had that in a while. The current plan, if everything happens the way I want it to, I'm going to make three of my Diom and a quarter Stutz Diom sequences. I'm going to make a few turns of Heelys, whether they're by themselves or in sets of two. I'll see how I feel when I get there just because I haven't done them in a while and it's kind of a confidence thing. And then I would like to do free hips, just get through a couple of them, do some Hanmas, kind of just touch everything except for dismount just because I don't, I'm not really worried about it. And just to take a little bit extra stress off my knee. I'll see where I'm at after that. And then I actually kind of want to play with some Stutz one bars or some Peters because I haven't done those in, I don't know, like three years or something. And that would be a nice D support skill. Only ever caught, I think, one and I didn't even like turn back into the middle just because it was kind of tricky, but I think it'd be a good skill to go back to now. So yeah, let's get to it. I don't know how I say that Dion in a quarter it draw back right away. So I can tell because the Dion does the same thing. That's a common thing at the end of the sequence to do a Dion that is pretty tight, but I'm like losing pressure, I guess, or just never having it. Same thing that I focused on when I first started doing it was I swing up and I just let go with my post arm to yeah, like force good. my toes on the inside. One for one, I will take it. Attempt number two, it was decently tight on the last one. I'm just gonna try and still lean back the same, but not stay back there too long so I can get on top of my post arm, be much stronger that way. Swung down for that studs at a million miles an hour, but made the correction on the Dion. Two for two. Okay, that one, the Dion and a quarter actually looked more like when I first started doing the skill again, where I was like a little bit too much on my post arm and I had to like reach with the right and pull myself over. That last Dion was nice. For me. So ideally that Dion and a quarter on the next one will be right in between the first one and the second one. The first one was on the inside, but I leaned back too much and I felt a little too heavy onto that right arm. And then this one, I felt like I was reaching to like pull myself to my right arm. Just gotta find that sweet spot. for three manifested that shit let's go i need to stop moving my damn hands after that studs though studs is the skill i'm most comfortable with in support and they're always kind of funky yeah i, I definitely i i caught that studs and bounced and moved my hand right away i didn't even give myself a chance to like catch and try and fight without moving my hands because those are good and i already hit the objective that i wanted to i want to try one more and kind of what i did on days prior where I would usually mess up. I'd overthink it because I was going for perfection. I'm gonna try one more and basically just squeeze everything as tight as possible. And if it works, great, it'll be even better. If not, I'll just move on. Four, first of all, W. Second of all, I think that is my first time doing this whole sequence without moving my hands. The only part I didn't like about it was the Diom. I did lean back and it helped me stay more open. I just did what I did last couple sessions where 
I leaned back and then pushed back too late, so I caught a little bit over. The nice part is, the way that I'm thinking about constructing the routine is I think after Diom, I'm gonna go and do a Harada or a dismount. So I'll be falling into a front uprise kinda, and I feel a lot more comfortable being a little bit out of control from a handstand and going into a front uprise than another support skill and still being able to make it work. Might not be as good as if I were to start in a solid handstand to do a harada or a dismount, but it's a lot more manageable for me personally. Okay, moving on Heelys, let's go. I'm gonna stick to one heel at a time. And if I make it, I'm gonna just try and keep going and see where we get. No expectations, I'm just gonna play around, okay? That way I'm not gonna get upset if I don't do it. I overdid it on that Diom a little bit. Shit! Alright, I already made the sequence once. Basically just gonna go for perfection. Tighten up, really try and not move the hands right away. Fight a little bit more on the handstand before I have to take that step. A couple more tries. It's probably a good thing I didn't make that three-quarter D on the one bar. I probably would have gone for the cuts, to be honest. It would be a very high chance that I would have wrecked my shit. I'm tired. I'm not going to push my luck. A lot farther than I thought I would. All right, I'm gonna prop the bars up. On my free hips. Let's keep this thing rolling. You know what? F it. I'm gonna keep this sequence thing rolling and just kind of see where I get. Feel good today. Caffeine helps, and a couple days off, even though I'm tired. But I'm gonna try and warm up, make a drop cast, then I'm gonna go to free hips. And then if and when I make a free hip and turn in, I'm just gonna drop down and do drop cast and Hanma. See if I can link them together. Be another first in, I don't know, three years, I guess. I've never competed free hip before, I only trained it, so. I set my toes over a little too much. Oh, yes. Thing, it would have been better to just keep going instead of popping up there and starting with like a Healy or a Dion or whatever. Oh, I didn't need to pike when I caught. I got ahead of myself and as soon as I started pushing, I arched. So stay hollow and direct the toes over and just hope I can turn it quick enough. Overthinking too much. I'm thinking about the whole sequence now. Just a free hip first and then we'll go from there. I'm 
upset that I didn't go for the Dion, but I'm also not upset because I wouldn't have been surprised if my arms just buckled. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Hell oh, yeah, dude. Sick. There you go. Hey, at least you made it. Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. Nope, not doing it. I had to fight way too hard that whole time. Okay, I was gonna play with uh, Stutz one bar, but I definitely don't have time for that because I haven't done it in three years. So, just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna do a couple harattas and then I'll try for it. Do you think this is how it goes? I need to do one from the handstand first. Oh my god, my rotator cuffs. Skibbity bop, skibbity, skibbity doo dop. Matchbox 20. Yes. P bars, Livy Dunn, Greenville Gymnastics. Aiden Nielsen, Ricky Mays. Richard, Ricky, Sticky Ricky. Stick, Rick. Sticky I love Ricky. it here. Skibbity bop though, but bop skibbity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, max my shoulders and rotator cuffs definitely hurt and are sore from that timer, so I'm just gonna try and catch one and be done. I'm not doing pommels today. <laughs> Fuck that. Okay. Alright, let's sign up. Dang it, dude. Okay, I'll wait. Nice. What? I said that looks like it hurts so much. It's not the catch. It's the, just as I swing through, sinking oh, low. Sweet. Catch hurts my biceps, but if I just do one, it's not that bad. double bubble really hurt but I was making a bet with Henry after I didn't stick the last full in I would let him try his upgraded palm routine if I stuck double double because I haven't done it since like the summer or something kind of crunched my ankles but I'm moving on to four stuff okay I'm gonna try and stick three lay punch double pulls real quick and then do lay double tucks and a few lay double bikes and then I am finito Oh. No, I 
finally done practice, obviously. I'm driving home right now in my brand new car, thankfully. But I didn't get to film this after I was finished up events because the college practice started and I just got really busy, so I didn't really have time. But even though today I only did rod floor and then just a long P-bar session, I was actually really happy with how P-bars went. I was hoping like best case scenario that the support skills were gonna go well. I wasn't expecting them to go that well considering how I was feeling when I was starting. But I guess it was just one of those days where everything was kind of clicking and, and just working for me, which was nice. On another positive note, it's nothing crazy or anything, but I have been getting uh, a lot more subscribers lately. So if you're new here, thanks for subscribing and welcome. Hope y'all are enjoying the videos. And there's been a handful of people that have been asking questions in the comments and stuff. I personally love that stuff because I will talk about gymnastics basically any time of day and we'll get carried away talking about it. So if you're watching and you got a question about anything, drop a comment and I will be sure to respond. Like always, thank you for watching. If you made it this far in the video, comment new car, cause new car. And I will catch you guys next week, hopefully when I'm a little bit less sick and can train more events. Peace.